This is me, the Undead Viking. This is Atlantis, Island of the Gods. This is a game for, well, I guess a game can be played solo, and it is actually a pretty good solo game, but I'll talk about that in my finale here. But this is a game, normally, I guess, most likely, is going to be played by two to four people. Each person is going to take on the role of a god that is overseeing Atlantis, and they can sense the end of Atlantis is coming. And so each person is going to be working hard to try to convince their followers to worship them above all else uh, so that their, um, their, their beliefs, their faith, whatever, can continue on after the island has been destroyed. Of course, Atlantis is gone, and we've never seen it again, so they failed utterly anyway, but, you know... <laughs> Who knows, right? Anyway, so um, the the game it relies on uh, building up different cards in your hand and cards in front of you um, to take different actions. Each person will take five actions each one of their turns, and it is a race. It is a game where like the, the finale of the game is the person who manages to build their temples faster than the other people. So you're always going to be looking at the other people at the table and seeing how well they're doing in comparison to yourself. And I like games like that because they have a, a certain amount of attention, a certain amount of like uh, a frenetic pace to them. And I and, and also it's like it isn't one of those games where um, you know it's like oh well uh, let's see how everybody did as far as their points are. And then you have all these little bonus points at the end. Oh look, uh, you thought you were winning, but you lost by fifty. That has its own allure, and I understand the like games that. People, like I enjoy those games as well, but um, there is something to be said about just always seeing just how well everybody else is doing and seeing how abysmal you are in comparison, or if you're leaving them in the dust and running away with the wind, or, or if it's a really, really close race. All those things make this game kind of fun and, and like the interactivity and the people enjoying the game in you know locked in and having a blast but anyway i've been talking a lot let me show you how the game is played and then we'll come back here and i'll give you my final thoughts this is atlantis island of the gods this is a four player game i have set up i am going to be showing you how just to play with one player here um there are like four different gods that are like trying to build up their temples and survive the destruction of atlantis and that's the theme of the game um you need to build up your temples in uh the, in which your god tells you so here i have the kind of no no i don't think so i am going to be taking uh, much better. I'll be taking Odin. Okay, so, um, so you can see here, like, you have this one, two, three, and four, and then you have these symbols down here, three of the types of temples that need to be built. And so, when the game begins, uh, you set up the four different, uh, locations, and then you randomly apply a number to each one. And so that means in, like, region number one, I have to have a, a level three temple, and two, and so forth. Now, some of these, like the aforementioned Ra that I almost played, like, you'll notice that there is one of these. That means that, he, um, the player who has Ra needs to build a level two temple with a level one temple along with it. So, there's just, um, different ways that you're going to be having to, uh, complete complete uh, your temples in order to win the game. And the first player who does that does, in, in fact, win said game. Um, we have these super cool uh, uh, miniatures that represent your different uh, temples, the different level temples. As you can see, it's one, two, and three. Uh, I have the other ones out there just so you can kind of see them. These are really super awesome. I invite you to check out the Kickstarter page. You can get a nice look at the images there as well. All right, so you have this giant deck of cards. This deck of cards is going to have all of these followers, and the followers are gonna be in the four different colors that are the four different regions that are out there. You purposely do set, set the game up with one um, color of each follower. Now, it doesn't mean anything like, like because I'm yellow, it doesn't mean like the kind of yellowish color is are my followers. All of these people are all of your followers. You need to use them because they are designated in the different areas of the board, and that's how you're gonna be able to take different actions. Uh, because I'm the first player, I'm given three cards to begin the game with. These are face down. You get one card randomly uh, picked and put in your follower area. The follower area is where you're going to be placing cards and you're going to be using the followers in those areas to take actions. And you can have pretty much um, like as many different followers as you want in your follower area. Um, you're going to be discarding them as time goes on through actions and what have you. You can never have more than five of one type of color of follower in your area. So if you ever have more than that, you have to discard. 
card. Likewise, at the end of your turn, you can have up to five cards in your hand. If you have more than five cards, you have to discard those as well. When it is your turn, you are given these five action tokens. After each time you take an action, uh, you will need to take one of these tokens and hand it to the person on your left. That's just a kind of time to make sure that you don't lose track, and that person collects those tokens one by one, and then it is their turn, and they do the same thing with their actions. They, they're going to take those, and they're going to hand those off to the person of your left. The beginning of your turn, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be drawing three cards into your hand. You can either take cards out of the tableau that are up here, or you can draw them randomly from this location. Uh, after you take three cards, you are then going to take your five actions. So um, I'm just going to, you know, uh, let's see here. Um, I, I haven't really studied the board to determine what my strategy is going to be at this moment, but let's go ahead and because when you, when you randomly put these out, the first card here is going to be the color, oh, and I actually put that wrong, so we're going to put that there. Uh, you, it's going to be the first um, color uh, that this uh, deity distinguishing mark is going to be. And that is like the presence of the deities is, is within this region, meaning that that region is ready uh, to be used, is ready to be built on, is ready to be have the deity's actions be enacted upon it. So looking at my hand, I actually got kind of lucky and I have two green cards. So let's just go ahead and grab another green one up here. And then I'm going to draw two cards off the top of the deck and see what I get. So I've actually got a lot of green. I don't have any blue. Well, I have my one blue card in my follower area right now, which, you know, kind of stinks, actually. We kind of build up on the blue. But regardless, we'll make this work. Somehow we'll, we'll take our actions and we'll do something successfully this turn. All right, so as I said, you get five actions. Let me walk through those five actions for you. Oh, before I do that, I want to express something. Um, each one of these tiles uh, for the city are double-sided. They they have, uh, you know, this side and they have that side. Now, the big difference between those is that, one, they'll have, like, the symbol, and that's, like, kind of, like, this suggested as, like, the beginner side of the, of the tile to be used. But but the big thing is, is that the special ability of this, uh, this, this like, city tile is different on either side so you can see and and it's a lot of iconography but the rule book for this game is fantastic it details it quite well and also um it is with lots of iconography games once you play them a couple times or even one time really um it, it all kind of clicks together and it makes sense all right so uh now all, all that being said um we're gonna go ahead and talk about the different actions that you can take all right, the first action, one that you're going to be doing a lot in this game, is called Travel. Travel is pretty basic. What you, All you're going to be doing with, with a travel action is you're going to take a card out of your hand. And I should mention, there is a very good distinction between uh, cards that are in your follower area and cards that are in your hand. You do need to pay attention to that when you're taking the actions because they are two distinct differences. But anyway, so you're going to have cards in your hand, like so. If you take a card and you discard it, and you just put it in the discard pile like so. You can then travel the uh, the deity token to another location like so. So the focus of the deities is in a different location among Atlantis. You're, that's important because, as I said, that's where the focus of the deities are, and you will need to move that around as the game proceeds so you can uh, you make sure you build your temples and where you need to be built. All right, so building. Now, what you're going to be doing with building as an action is you're going to be uh, moving on. And I should mention, other than one, there's one action that you can only do once. But all these actions you can do multiple times. You just have to be able to have the cards and, and the ability to do so. But anyway, so the action of building. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to move a number of dweller cards, and these are the dweller cards, the followers, dwellers, what have you. You're going to be moving those from your hand of a certain color and placing them um, in your follower area. So it has to be the same spot where the deity presence marker is in order to do so. So if you want to build, what you're going to do, and we're going to go ahead and look since that's area one, eventually we're going to have to build a level three temple in that area. That's what Odin is requesting. So what you do is you just place the follower in your, you place the card from your hand into the follower area, and then you're able to build a temple. So you have to go in grades though. You can't just say, I'm going to build a level three temple, boom, done. You have to say, okay, I'm building a level one temple, like so. And then your temple is built. If you, probably what you're guessing is, if you 
discard a level one card, it's a level one. Discard level two cards, level two. Discard level three, you know, three cards, level three. And you are replacing the one that is already there when you do so. Uh, so you know it, it is a, it is a gradual thing, but yes, you know it's it's to prevent. Obviously, if you were able to just get a bunch of like cards in your hand and build level three right away, um, then you, you, <laughs> the game would be over pretty quickly. I, I should mention that. Okay, let's say we were raw and this was you know like an, an area like that where it says you know level one, level two. You have to then upgrade one you know, to the, to the level two like so, and then you would have to build a level one along with that level two in that location. However, it does not take one card to build that other level one. You're gonna take the total levels of the buildings that are in that area to build that. So in this situation, if you went from level one to a level two, that would take the normal two cards. And then if you added this one to that, that would be three cards as well. So you don't get it for cheaper, you just have to build the separate sizes. Now, you might be saying, well, what's the difference between having, you know, uh, the different sizes and what have you. The big thing with that is that um, since this marker, and this is something that's going to happen a lot, this marker is going to be ping-ponging back and forth depending upon the other player's actions. A lot of times, you you might have, like, uh, you know, something, and you mentioned, I should mention that you are building in, like, the color that is, so I, I should be building in that location because it's I have yellow to yellow. Um, but when you are building in these locations, um, uh, the big thing is, is that sometimes, like, you might use up your level ones in other areas, and because you and you can't get that marker back to that spot to build it up and replace this and put it back into your hand, or you know into your like storage area, what have you. You have the ability to deconstruct things. You also have the ability to build um, temples in the neutral area and then move them later, which is another action. But so these are not like a lot of times in like games with resources and stuff, they'll say that um, the resources are like infinite. Not so with your temple pieces. Your temple pieces are not infinite. So you have to have some careful planning as far as that's concerned. All right, so also I should mention that if you are building so with this side of the board, and I'll explain how you use the actions on the board, you can get these assistant tokens. You can only have one assistant token uh, at any one time, but if you have an assistant token, you can discard that to lower the cost of the build by one card, meaning you could even build a level one temple for nothing. All right, so that is uh, the build action and how, how you're gonna be constructing. And you're like obviously gonna be constructing lots of temples because that's how you win the game. All right, so demolition, you can just remove, uh, you can remove, demolition is just an action, you just remove it. It's, it's gone, you destroy it, it's, it's done. Um, like I said, the only reason you'd be doing that is if you, you know, have the ability to build a level one temple in another spot right then and there, and, or level two or level three, whatever. I can't imagine why you destroy level two or level three, but you can go ahead and destroy it to get the piece back so then you can build it in another spot, and that's why you would do that. All right, so conversion. Uh, this is the one, conversion is the one action you can only do once per turn. And conversion is you are stealing the followers. If somebody has a follower in front of them, uh, like, like the dweller in their follow area, you can take one card and then go ahead and put that in your follower area. You can't put it in your hand. You will put it in your own follower area. So, you know, if, uh, you know, my opponent over here had that, I could go ahead and take it as I throw the four over the way, and I can then move it into my follower area like so. Remember, you can only do that once, however, because that's a pretty powerful ability because not only does it help you, but you're lessening the ability of the other person in that spot. All right, so festivity is another action. Now, this is how you're gonna actual, actually do the things on the tiles. To do a festivity action, let me just go ahead and move those, you need three cards. Uh, of the same color in your area. And so you command your followers to have a festivity in your honor. And when you do, uh, and you have to have at least three, what you're gonna do is you're gonna move two of the cards of the region with the deity presence marker from the follower area, like so, and put them in the discard pile. When you, and when you put in the discard pile, then you can enact the ability that is on that particular tile. 
Actually, let me just go ahead and pick that up and I'll show it to you. So I can, like, I'm going to knock these off if I pick them up. So I'm just going to put those off to the side. All right. So um, this action right there. Uh, and once again, this is iconography based. So as you like learn the game, this is going to make sense. But so what that says is that you're going to take any two dweller cards uh, from the recruitment area. And then you're going to go ahead and place those in your hand. Oh, and you know what? I actually I forgot to replenish. I apologize. Even though I think I even mentioned, I got to remember to replenish these. Okay, so we'd have those. And so what you do then is if you if you did the festivity in this location, you get to take uh, one card. And so you can. So we take that purple one. Maybe I really want it. Want it because I want to be able to use this spot possibly. And then you replace that one. Ooh, another purple. But I'll take this purple because <laughs> I don't know why. I think that one's better. And I'm going to go ahead and place that. So. Uh, that is how you do, like, you enact the different abilities of the tiles. Now, remember, remember that action I told you about the travel? Like, if you really wanted to use this ability, and then you, you place that over there, like, you know, that's, you'd play a travel card to get it to that spot, and then you would have those other cards in your hand, hopefully to enact that thing, so you could grab one of those assistance tokens, because that's the ability of that particular tile. Now, you might be saying, well, um, how do I, uh, you know, after your know, conversion obviously allows you to place uh, like other people's cards into your own. But the, the another ability that you're going to use a lot is just recruitment, and you just can move any number of cards um, from your hand to your follower area as long as they are the same color. And now this does not have to be the same as the color that the that the deity marker is in. So if I wanted to, like I got those, I could take an action. I can move these two, like here like so because I just I, I grab I just grabbed those two and now like if I still um, if I did went ahead and I wanted to do another like festivity action I could take those I could discard those and now I could grab my assistant token I think I've done five actions probably done more than five actions but you get the idea so the big thing here is you are going to be ping-ponging this uh, the, the, the deity marker around the board and trying to get it to the spots that you need it to be in so you can start building your big temples. And once like you're able to build up and have your big temples, and I'm here's my level two right there, and then another level three right there. As soon as one player is able to do those particular actions uh, and get those particular temples set up as per their card asks, the game is immediately over. The game has unlimited turns, obviously, but you can't destroy uh, somebody's temples, so you can't really take those away. So the game, you know, doesn't last too long for that matter. But, you know, it is one of those things where as soon as that happens, it's done. There's no such thing as everybody gets one more turn to see if they can match the person. No, you don't get to do that. As soon as that's done, the game is over, and uh, you, the, the person who managed to do this uh, succeeds. Now, you might be saying, there's one thing I know a lot of you might be wondering, is that well, there's this extra spot. There's this neutral spot where you can uh, build... Uh, those like build build up your temples if you want to. Well, the reason why that spot exists is the special ability that's located right here. You can move any of your temples like so. If you do a festivity on this blue tile there, and like let's say like we had like we don't have that one there. So and we had built a level two temple in that location, and we already had this level two there. And I should mention that if anybody has built into that spot. Um, nobody else can, so you're the only person that can have that spot. Uh, but this ability here can move any one of your temple tiles from any construction site to another one. And so if I did that action and was able to do it, I would be able to move that particular temple over to there, and I would be declared the winner because with that action, that festivity, would allow me to do so. And that's why there's those neutral sites. So I just thought maybe you had that question. But there you go. That is Atlantis, uh, the island. And like, I, I just, I've always liked games with cards that allow me to take actions and allow, they give me like a puzzle each and every turn where I'm trying to figure out, oh, and I should also mention, I forgot these tokens, when you have completed, so everybody can see, you should always have your deity. When people can tell that you've done it so they know how close you are, you place one of these little completion tokens on your, oh, covering that spot. So people know that you are done with that. So they can kind of keep track of how well you're doing. So you can't like surprise somebody with a win. But anyway, so, 
I've always enjoyed games like this. I like games with cards and like tableau building and things like that where you're like kind of building up your area down here. You're going to be, you know, like, and you know, you have to sacrifice certain cards, take certain actions. Um, you know, you have the ability to mess with people a little bit because you can take their stuff away. Um, you can even kind of maybe block them a little bit by using the neutral spots and somebody might be wanting to use those. So, I mean, anytime when it's like a race, it's like a ladder that you're climbing, trying to be the first person to reach the top. I always enjoy these because, like I said, I enjoy interaction. I enjoy, um, like, the tension that these games kind of uh, present to you. And because of the fact that you always want to optimize your turn each and every time and try to make sure that you are in the lead. But let me talk more about that uh, in my final thoughts. <laughs> that was good. All right, so there you go. That is how to play Atlantis Island of the Gods. Um, as always, if you have any questions about the gameplay or anything like that, be sure to ask. Go ahead. I, I mentioned the the solo game. Uh, it's the solo game pretty much plays exactly the same, but you need to build the temples yourself uh, in a certain amount of time. Basically, the Atlantis is crumbling. You, I think you get ten turns to be able to complete everything, and that is the only version of the game that is timed. Obviously, I, I kind of touched on that. That you know, this is a game that it has a definitive end. The definitive end is different for each player, but you're all kind of doing the same thing. You all have to build the same like build temples get them up, get them up faster than everybody else. So I, I just, this is a game where, um, when I, when I looked at the game, I was like, well, this looks really simple. You know, I was just like, oh, okay. Just a bunch of cards with like, you know, you sometimes like you'll get cards that have like tons of instructions on them. And these are just cards that had colors. They didn't even have to have this art on them. They, they, this could just be brown card. This could be blue card. I'm sure there's a prototype that was just like that at some point. Um, but you know, it's, you know, and which, talking about art, I do like the art in this game, and I think the art adds a lot. It has, like, a nice, real crisp, simple look to it, if you will, but also detailed. I don't know. It, um, I hate to, like, do a comic book reference, but, I mean, when I look at them, and this is obviously a prototype, I, I'm getting, like, a Frank Quitely uh, I feel for it. Maybe I'm not completely off, and somebody's going to, a big comic book guy is going to be like, well, you, first of all, you said his name wrong, and second of all, it's nothing like that. But I, I that's the kind of feel uh, that I got for it as I was playing. But regardless, kind of taking a step back, um, the uh, I, I've always liked games where... Um, you know, the, the depth surprises me. And this one did. It's, it's one of those things where, as you're playing it, it's like, it's getting that... <laughs> stupid little circle, this thing, in the right spot where I need it, and having it kind of bounced around. And then because of the fact that you can actually see what other people are doing and see what they're up to, you can see the followers they have in front of them. They, you know, you can see like the relative size of the hands that they have in their hand. Like if, you know, if somebody doesn't have a lot of cards in their hand, they're not going to really surprise you with any certain amount of actions. But, you know, it's just, there's different things as far as like, oh, well, I need to get that thing off of the spot with green because you know, they've got three green followers in front of them. They're going to be able to do a festivity. So if I can get that off of that spot, now they're kind of stuck because it's like, oh, do, do they have another green card? Is there a green card in the, the, the recruitment area that's in front of them? Are they going to be able to take that? So there's different things. And the big thing is the economy of actions. You only get five actions to take. And so if you can kind of limit or force people to take extra actions, you know, getting more cards into their hand, things like that, if you can force people to take actions that use up, like, what their options are, you know, then you are making their uh, ability to, you know, get to the, the winning circle, if you will, take that much more time. And there is, like, this wonderful tension as everybody's getting close, because this, this game was not a game where I had any... Well, there was one game we have where one person kind of ran with it, ran away with it, but um, just maybe some good cards. Maybe the person to their right wasn't doing what they were supposed to be doing. But for the most part, when we played this game, it was very, very, very close and very, 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 you know, you know, it seemed like every single turn, somebody was going to, like, you know, pull off the win. It was, uh, you know, you were wondering the cards they have in the hand, if they're going to have enough actions to pull it off, that sort of thing. And there is something to be said for, like, when you feel yourself, it's like, I just need one more turn, I just need one more turn, you know, and, and you're watching the actions being taken by each player, and you're like, don't screw this up for me, don't screw this up for me, and then, like, somebody takes the action to take you know, the follower away away from your, they, 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 they steal it with, through conversion and they take it away. And you're like, oh, now I'm not going to be able to do it because you're counting up the actions in your head. It's like, I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to, ah, I can't do it now. And so 
I like games like that. I like games that the other players, and the game itself can frustrate you, but the other players can frustrate you, and they can actually purposely do it. And I, and I like games where I have to contend not only with the mechanisms of the game, but also with the machinations of the other people that are at the table. And then, just throw on a really cool theme, some really awesome art, and just, like, I mean, it, the game doesn't, you know, uh, I'm guessing my games with fewer players, it took, uh, you know, 30, 40 minutes, like two or three players. There were a couple games of four players that lasted over an hour, but those are kind of the first ones we did. And and this was uh, definitely a game that we, we shortened down to for the 45-minute area, you know, when we had four people that had played the game once before. And, um, you know, it, that was like the perfect length for this type of game. It, it, it doesn't stay doesn't stay too long, and I, I feel like my, my mental gaming brain has been taxed during those 45 minutes as well. So there you go. Uh, that is Atlantis Island of the Gods. If you have any questions about the game, please ask away. I'll be happy to answer those as best as I can. As always, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video, and until next time, I am the Undead Viking, and I am telling you to have yourself one heck of an awesome day. All right, bye-bye.